So like I said before, it's really important to see that all of this witchcraft is about an exchange of power, positives to negatives. So let's talk about the unwitcher and the witch. Now, an unwitcher has a sense of negativity, but it only uses its negativity against a witch. The unwitcher does not pull the vitality of others into his domain. His domain is set. It doesn't need anything. So the unwitcher is not jealous. The unwitcher only seeks to stop the witch, forcing the witch to return stolen energy, and the unwitcher punishes the witch. But that unwitcher does not then pull energy from the witch to increase himself. The techniques involve rituals to connect and psychically battle the witch. How does this work out visibly to the patients, to the clients? Well, there's a sort of talking therapy because the bewitched are, set, are asked to tell it all, tell it all. There are also charms. We read that there are diagnostic tarot card usage that I can't quite figure out the system of from our book, uh, The Anti-Witch. If you want to know more about it, you read The Anti-Witch from 2009 or translated in 2015. So again, like I said, the domain of the unwitcher is satisfied. It cannot have any more added to it. This is why the force of the witch, when the witch is defeated, is not claimed and vampirized by the unwitcher. They use their excess force that is considered a negative force to do evil for evil to a witch. So the witch is putting forth negative force. The unwitcher comes in and also puts in negative force, returning evil for evil. But the unwitcher is hopefully more important than the witch and overwhelms the witch. And when it completely overwhelms the witch, then it extracts the energy back to the bewitch that has been stolen and extracts a punishment. The interesting thing to me about this is they really choose to use this excess force to do evil for a witch. And they don't go out hunting witches. They only go after witches when they're afflicting their clients. If it's somebody's just a witch, they're like, ah, I don't care, whatever, I'm just a witch. But if you, if you mess with my people, I'll mess with you. They're, they choose to be avengers. They choose to be on witchers. They're not compelled to do it. The witch is compelled to act, to deploy the force to drain others. But the unwitcher doesn't. They could be someone who has strong blood. But just because someone has strong blood, they're not compelled to be on witchers. And in fact, I sort of wonder if the unwitcher is able to beat the witch, then they should theoretically die, right? But usually from what we read in the text, when an unwitcher is not successful, they say, oh, no. The witch is too strong. I can't do it. The victim is too is too caught. So when the unwitcher meets with the bewitched, they enter the domain of the bewitched temporarily. In this space, they're coded the same as the wit, as the unwitcher. The negative force of the, the sorry. In this sense, when the unwitcher enters the space of the bewitched, they are in the circuit where the witch is drawing from them, drawing from the bewitched, and they become like an insulator. They come up and they say, oh yeah, you got negative force? I got negative force. It's like negative force, negative force. And they try to overwhelm the witch who's deploying it. This is temporary. So we do see that when witchcraft is resolved and it's successful, they may punish the witch, they may deplete him, but that energy is either given back to the bewitched who had their energy stolen. Well, that's what happens. But then if there's excessive energy, it just leaves the system. So the unwitcher does not take the witch's force. Otherwise, they would be witches themselves, right? The professional unwitcher, however, is paid and can be paid handsomely by their clients. So they make money by being paid for their services. They don't make money by stealing vitality from others. All right, I'll be right back. 